Give me your crypto story as well. Where did that come in? Bitcoin actually had come up in several discussions when I was at JP Morgan. And John Norman, who was the head of FX at the time, had talked about it. He wrote several pieces. But he wrote one that we had a whole conversation around, our firm did, which is that he thought that Bitcoin could become a currency at some point. Now, I think the network value of Bitcoin was $20 billion, which made it like a decent sized stock. But he was saying that it was obviously mostly for dark web and illicit purposes. So I didn't think much of it and I didn't even follow Bitcoin. But then uh, we started Fundstrat. And then in 2017, for some reason, I think I saw the price of Bitcoin again. And I was like, whoa, this thing just went 10x in just a few years. And so... I've covered stocks enough to know that sometimes when something does a 10x, it means there is something to it, not that it's a bubble. Actually, in the equity world, a lot of times it's actually telling you something's real. Particularly when it's a network. That's the big difference. Yes. Networks tend to do this much more consistently. Correct. First, we found that if you just did a very simple two-factor model which is the number of wallets and then activity per wallet, it explained over 90% of the rise of Bitcoin. And then, you know, t we realized that's exactly why social media networks created value. Because the idea of like eyeballs and the someone being the customer and then because it's free and you sell them out, like that was a very new concept. So to me, I had already believed in this idea that you could create businesses digitally that didn't start with a factory.